Okay, I'm preparing to go live. I think it says on my computer that we are now streaming live, but I'll just wait until yours is there too. Okay, right, thank you. Um, welcome to those joining us online. Um, so, <clears throat> good evening. Welcome to members, officers, the press and public joining us for tonight's Strategic Development Committee. Uh, the meeting is being live streamed on YouTube, so welcome to everybody viewing by YouTube. Um, to minimise travel, maintain social distancing, most of the officers are joining this evening's meeting via Zoom. Uh, can I check that everybody present in the room can hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you, thank you. Um, and can those joining us online please give me a wave or a thumbs up or some other positive gesture to show if you can hear me? It's great, thank you. My name's Rachel Tripp. I'm the chair of the committee. Um, for the members in the room, when you're speaking, can I ask please that you speak loudly and clearly so that the microphone can pick up what you're saying, which means those joining us virtually can hear. For those joining via Zoom, um, please keep your microphone muted if you're not speaking. I'm now going to ask members of the committee and officers to introduce themselves. Um, we'll start in the room and go around this way. Um, my name is John Morris. I am the councillor for Class of Us and Canada County East, and I am a member of this committee. Councillor Joshua Garfield um, from Stratford Ward and vice chair of the committee. Mohamed Ghani, member of Bolin Ward and member of this committee. Madeline Sally Ponting, councillor for Forest Gate South, a member of this committee. Thank you very much. May I now please ask those officers joining us online to introduce themselves? Um, and you probably want to use the order in which you appear in the committee agenda to be clear on who's speaking um, when. Uh, I'm Jane Custance. I'm the Director of Planning and Development. Sorry, the sun's just come round, so I am not an angel. Is it possible for us to see the officers? We're looking at ourselves. Okay, yes. We're just sorting out the screen in the council chamber such that um, members can see the individual officers' faces. Thank you, Chair. Um, we're sorting that out if we carry on um, on the agenda. So, James, that means you're next. Thank you, Chair. Hello, everyone. I'm James Bolt. I'm Senior Development Manager. Hello, I'm Amanda Campbell. I'm Head of Planning Law. Hello, I'm Rajvin Dekor. I'm Planning Officer for London Borough of Newham. Over to I'm you, Liam. Liam McFadden. I'm Planning Officer London Borough of Newham. And I'm Ben Hull, Strategic Design Manager at London Borough of Newham. Thank you. So can I remind members, please, that when a vote is taken, it will, as usual, be by way of raising your hand in order that we can capture this on screen. Item one, apologies. Um, I've had apologies from Councillor Lee Parkway and also from Councillor Alarm. Are there any further apologies that we're aware of, please? I'm not sure. No, thank you. <clears throat> Item two, the minutes from our previous meetings held on the 14th of June and the 12th of July. Um, can I suggest, please, that we take the minutes of the 14th of June first? Yeah, is it the 14th of June or the 12th? Yeah. Sorry, that's on page 21 of our agendas. Okay, thank you. Are there any, any matters of inaccuracy or any matters arising that any member wanted to raise from those minutes, please? In which case, can I suggest that we agree those minutes as a true record of that meeting? Agreed. Thank you very much. On page 13 of our agenda, we have the minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of July. Um, my thanks to Councillor Garfield for chairing that meeting when I couldn't make it. Um, can I ask please if there are any matters of inaccuracy or matters arising or anything else coming from these minutes? Thank you. In which case, can we agree these minutes also as a true record of that meeting? Thank you very much. Um, I wonder, um, Councillor Khan, if I could ask you to introduce yourself. Sorry, I'm aware you're just settling in. You come to join us. You're in time for the substantive items, so thank you. Thanks for my lateness, everybody. Uh, Mumtaz Khan, Councillor in the West. Thank you. And we can now give you a moment to um, 
settle in and get yourself sorted. I don't, sorry, I'm just finding my space on here. Item three, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? Yes, Chair. I just wanted to declare, in light of item, let me get the number correct, in light of item, Thank you. We will note that for the minutes, um, but I think that you will still be able to take part in the discussion about this. Any other declarations of interest? Um, I don't know if I need to declare that one of these sites is in my ward, which is the UEL development. That's helpful. Thank you. Again, we'll, we'll note that in the minutes, but you should still be able to participate in the decision making. So that's declarations of interest. Item four, determining planning applications. Members are asked to note the advice from the head of legal services on determining planning applications. Is that noted? Noted. Thank you. Item five, announcements from the chair. Uh, we've received the following requests to address the committee. Um, could the speakers please identify themselves when I call out your name? Firstly, for item six, which is the UEL Stratford campus, Water Lane, I have Chris Gascoigne. Good evening, Chair. Thank you. And Liam O'Dell. Good evening, Chair. Thank you very much. For item seven... Excuse me, Chair. Can the speakers please tell me what their roles are? Oh, yes, they, I think they will when we get to the application. Okay. At the moment, I'm just thinking everyone's here so that we know they haven't had connection issues. Um, for item seven from Maniga Primary School, I have um, Gareth Box, in fact, I could help you here, from IID Architects. Gareth, are you on the yeah. phone? Good evening, Chair. Great, thank you. Also, Jimmy here, also from IID Architects. Yeah, good evening, Chair. Thank you. Um, Terry Charles, Senior Quantity Surveyor from LBN. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, Alessandro Saracino from the Berlin Trust. Good evening. Thank you. And Elizabeth Harris, the head teacher of the school. Good evening. Thank you. And for item eight, the development land at John Street, I have Mazhar Ali. Good evening, Chair. Um, Francis Young, I'm on the list. Maz is meant to be joining, I believe, um, mm -hmm. and there are two other people listed as well. Yeah, I they also don't have... appear to have joined yet. Okay, so I, I also have Nick Foyle and Kaldeep Malhotra, and we will hope that they will join us as we go through. So, the um, just to, Sorry, just to mention that, in fact, Andrew Prime is going to join rather than called it from yeah, the case. That's helpful to know, thank you. Thank you. So the usual practice is to allow up to five minutes in total for both supporters and objectors. Uh, do we agree that, please, members? Agreed. Thank you. And can we agree the remainder of the order of business as outlined on the agenda? Agreed. Now, we have no officer update report today. So I will just say, as usual, that please note that the full consideration and planning assessment of matters is covered really comprehensively in the committee report. I know that members will have had full regard to the committee report, so the officer presentation will be a summary of the key issues only. Um, can I then please call on the applicants team for item six to address the committee? So that's the University of East London, Stratford campus. Good evening, Chair. Um, good evening, members. Hi, my name's Chris Gascoigne from DP9 Planning and Consultants. We've just got a very short statement, really, rather than a full five minute presentation, if that's OK. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll start now if that's okay. So as I said, good evening, Chair, good evening, members. Um, my name is Chris Gascon from DP9 Planning Consultants. I'm joined by Liam O'Dell, who's the Director of Projects and Estate Development at the University of East London. Hopefully it's a relatively straightforward application for you this evening. Um, the planning application before you relates to the University of East London Stratford campus, and it seeks a temporary planning permission to retain two existing um, lecture theatre buildings for a further one year. Now, they, they already exist and they have temporary planning permission already. We're seeking a one year extension to that. The reason being is that this will allow the university to bring forward proposals for permanent replacement buildings through the planning process. Just a little bit of context, um, the university obviously calls Newham its home, has done since its, its establishment. Um, we have over 25,000 students across the three main campuses in the borough. Um, and the university, I'm pleased to say, is that I'm embarking on a kind of a period of growth. 
responding to the increased demand for higher education places in London, um, including um, the critical areas of health and key work of vocational courses which occur at the Stratford campus. Now, to cater for this growing demand, one of the university's main objectives is to provide really high quality living and learning accommodation at the Stratford campus through the redevelopment of the existing underutilised site. We want to really lead by example through kind of innovation, well-being and sustainable design. And there's um, the new proposals are being discussed with your officers at the moment. Um, they're designed and being led by Neil Dealey and his team at Metropolitan Workshop, who you'll be aware of, obviously very familiar with the borough. Um, a fundamental part of this kind of wider redevelopment strategy is ensuring that there is sufficient capacity for teaching and learning at the Stratford campus. Um, and the, um, the existing temporary lecture theatres do currently serve this purpose and securing temporary planning consent for a further one year will allow us to continue to engage with your officers through the pre-application process with a view to us submitting a full planning application for, excuse me, for the wider redevelopment in early 2023. Um, we'll also be um, presenting these emerging proposals to, to you and other members at the Development Control Members Forum, hopefully before the end of the year. And then obviously, hopefully we, we will see you at Planning Committee once our permanent application has been submitted. Um, so look, basically, we're asking for a one year temporary planning permission for the two existing um, temporary lecture theatre buildings. We've obviously read your officer report. We don't have anything to add for it, to it. We thank the officers for their um, recommendation for approval, which we hope members will agree with. Um, we'd be very happy to answer any questions that you all members may have. Thank you. That was an admirably short presentation. Thank you very I'm much. I'm sure you've got a busy agenda, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I propose that we take questions at the end of the presentations, as usual. Um, so, Raj, could I ask for your officer presentation, please? Yep, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'll share my screen now. Can I check that you can see the screen presentation? We can. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, members. Item 6, University of East London, Stratford Campus. The site is situated in the northwest of the borough and is the University of East London, Stratford Campus. So the application seeks temporary permission for two single-storey temporary lecture theatre buildings for educational use. The proposals have been revised to a one-year temporary permission from originally five years. This image is an aerial image showing the location of both modular buildings. Lecture Theatre 2 in yellow on the image is sited within the site behind the existing car park and Lecture Theatre 3 in blue on the image is sited just off the common. This image shows the bird's eye view to the south showing both the existing lecture theatres in the context of the campus and the wider residential area. These are the key plans of both the lecture theatres. No changes are proposed to either building both internally or externally. Key planning considerations are the principle of development, design, heritage, and the impact upon amenity. Principle of development, the MPPG states that it would really be justifiable to grant a second temporary permission, except where changing circumstances provide a clear rationale, such as temporary classrooms and school facilities. In this case, the temporary modular buildings have been on site for over 15 years. Officers have had regard to and given weight to potential harm to the education of students that a refusal may bring, and officers take the position that the retention of these buildings for a revised time of one year would benefit attendees of the university and allow for an alternative solution to be put in place. The principal development under a temporary permission for one year is therefore considered on balance acceptable. Design and appearance. So no changes are proposed to the existing modular buildings. The buildings were repainted under a previous permission to make them appear less incongruous with the campus, softening their appearance. Whilst this is noted, the appearance would still be in contrast to the surrounding campus and area. Noting the need for them and previous external refresh, the proposals are on balance acceptable on a revised one year temporary basis only. In terms of heritage considerations, the Grade 2 star listed University House Building and Con University Conservation Area is located to the south of the buildings. Officers have assessed the impact to the heritage as it's in line with the national and local policy within the officer report and consider that the proposals due to their siting and scale would not harm the historical significance of the assets nor their settings. In terms of the impact to neighbouring amenity, in response to the one consultation, oh, in response to the consultation, one representation was received from the public. Notwithstanding this, officers have carefully considered the proposals to retain the modular buildings for a further year and anticipate them not to have an unacceptable impact on neighbouring residential amenity. In terms of the recommendation, members are asked to resolve to agree the reasons for approval as set out in this report and two, to grant planning permission based on the conditions listed in Appendix 1 of the committee report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Can I ask that you stop sharing your screen so that we can go back? That's perfect. Thank you. 
Um, in which case, we move to the point where I ask members of the committee if they have any questions they would like to address, either to the applicants or to the officer. Councillor Sally Pontin. Thank you, Chair. UEL, can I ask why you've needed temporary buildings up for a non-temporary period, which is going to total at least 16 years? <clears throat> the uh, reason, the rationale behind that was, um, I believe that there was a, uh, a plan. I joined UEL in late 2019 as the projects and estates development manager. Um, but previous to that, I believe that there was uh, an opportunity to go through some redevelopment works. And with the, uh, the I think the 2008 financial crisis and then the subsequent pandemic um, put some uh, road blockers in the way to that. Um, but very much looking forward to that, Councillor. Um, the university is on a uh, period of growth and responding to that um, increasing growth. Um, the university is currently looking at mobilising the redevelopment of the site um, and the coincidence of the expiry of this uh, particular planning permission um, we've sought to extend on the basis that we know that we're going to be undertaking the uh, the master plan for the uh, expansion on the uh, on the rest of the site. Um, as uh, uh, Chris, my colleague, alluded to earlier in the introduction, um, that um, we've got uh, the, the the redevelopment in train at the moment of the existing site, which is underutilised at the moment. Did you want to come back at all? Yeah, I'm not sure if that really answers the question. Um, I remember sitting in one of these lecture theatres, I think in 2007, and sure. it wasn't particularly comfortable then. So it does worry me a little bit that they, these have gone past their sell-by date. And I'm a little worried that the university hasn't addressed this issue before then, because you have been expanding for some time, which we applaud. Absolutely, Councillor. Um, and in that respect, we've actually taken measures to remove what we call the R block, which may have been the, the larger block that you actually um, uh, used and, and welcome you to come to the university again actually and we're quite happy to show you around um, but we have removed the initial uh, block and because of the capacity issues that we had with learning and teaching uh, development we've retained these two particular units um, but we did remove the greater good of the temporary units prior to the expiry of the planning requirements and this is the legacy that has, uh, has only just recently expired on the basis that, as I say, that the redevelopment works are coming through as we speak. Just, just to add to that, I think, Council, we've probably got shared objectives, which is to get rid of these temporary buildings and yeah. obviously replace them with some good new permanent ones. But obviously we have to go through a planning process and we, we hope to come and see you at Members Forum kind of shortly to show you what those, those ideas are. So hopefully this time next year we'll be in a position to come hopefully have a permission for some permanent replacement buildings, meaning these temporary ones can really go. Definitely. I was going to say that I think if, if you do wish to build, to build new builds, which I don't, you know, which we will look forward to your application on that, I think it may have been a good idea to have brought some of that information before us before asking for an extension of the temporary buildings, which are now very old and not really temporary, are they, after 15 years? But thank you. I'm, I'm very glad that you raised this issue because that was a question mark in my mind as well about when is temporary, not temporary. Um, I note the comments that you made about the kind of permanent planning, and obviously we look forward to seeing that in our members control forum and contributing to that and look forward very much to permanent plans. And I suppose what I'm kind of looking for from the university um, is your word, at least, that this is, when you say that, no, no, this is the last extension, now we're going to go for something permanent. Um, are you able to offer us any assurance that this time you do really mean it? Because evidently before that was not what happened. Absolutely. Um, the, the assurance is there that we have in train a, a planning performance agreement with uh, our learned uh, colleagues in uh, the, the offices that uh, Mr. Bolt and uh, Ms. Kaur are assisting us with at the moment. So uh, that's demonstrable evidence that the university has actually taken this seriously and recognised that there is the need to actually get rid of temporary and become a little bit more permanent. So uh, the, the assurances are there. That's helpful, thank you. Um, officers, are you able to back that up from your point of view as well? Are you seeing evidence of that work being done to move towards a, te a, um, a permanent solution here? Thank you, Chair. Yes, we have. They have entered into a planning performance agreement with the council and they are stepping up the, the speed of their timetable in terms of proposals moving forward. 
Thank you. Um, I see you again, Mads. Can I just check whether anyone else has a question first? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> um, Councillor Khan. I just wanted some clarity in terms of the Grade 2 listed building. Um, is that... Is that the next building to the temporary building and how will it affect any um, the the grade two listed building is actually the building you see in the in the wallpaper. I thought it'd be appropriate to put it in as my wallpaper. It's the building that you actually see when you uh, drive down Romford Road on the corner of Waterlee. Um, the particular buildings that we're talking about are actually tucked away around the back of the site. Uh, they're not particularly visible. Um, although that, quite rightly they are they are a little bit unsightly in terms of uh, but the decoration standard has been maintained the university has gone out of their way to maintain them albeit that they are temporary facilities so the great in, in the context of the grade two listed building um, that deals with the actual site on on the corner of Romford Road and Water Lane. Does that clarify things for you? Yes it does. Thank you. <clears throat> Any um, further questions? Um, I did have one question, and then I'll come back to um, Mads. I noted the single objection, um, which um, I did, of course, see the helpful response from officers that this was largely not material to this particular extension, but was more about the actual development to begin with. Um, based on what came up in that objection, though, I did want to address the applicant and ask for some reassurance about relationships with local residents, about your kind of embedding in the local community, about how well you get on with your neighbours. Um, some, I'm, I'm seeking some reassurance here and I wonder if you can give it. Absolutely. Um, we actually thank the, uh, the resident uh, that actually brought that to our attention. Um, and that was um, uh, dealt with by our estate operations team with regards to making sure that the um, state of the estate, if I use that term, uh, is, is you know, kept up to date. Um, we have a very good working relationship, um, you know, and interface with our with our neighbours. Of course, we have the NHS uh, clinic that 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 serves uh, the site as well. So, in terms of embedment into the community and those sorts of things, uh, the university, in fact, also hosts some LBN uh, outreach workers as well on a regular basis that use the coffee house that we have on, on site and um, we welcome, you know, we welcome that as well. So in terms of that objection, um, we have we have addressed it and it will be addressed as a part of the overall uh, development plan that we have in place moving forward. Um, that's helpful to know, thank you. And I'm sure that um, Madeline, along with her ward colleagues, will be chasing up everything that needs to be followed up. Um, can I bring you back again, please? Thank you, thank you. that's partly what I was gonna say that um, myself and my Wargus colleague councillors are um, we're cognizant of the issues which are concerning some of our tenants in that area. We're also very cognizant of what falls within UEL's purview, what falls within the council purview, and what is actually possible and not possible um, under general life as well. Um, the last thing I wanted to say was that um, I really hope that UEL doesn't come back to us with another request for a temporary extension of this temporary, temporary, temporary let set of lecture theatres. Um, I'm particularly glad that I think it was officers that recommended that UEL did not ask for another five years and uh, made you reduce it to a one year extension. Um, but we really want to see really quite quickly some concrete, uh, and that's a pun, um, some concrete proposals, please, because I don't, with your growing, um, <coughs> your growing student numbers, which these lecture theatres were put in place to accommodate your growing student numbers 15 years ago, I can imagine that given that you have one, only one uh, quite ancient uh, lecture theatre that's permanent on the site, that you do want to address this and move forward to meet the needs of your students, many of whom are from the borough or from North East London. Thank you, Councillor, for your comments. It's appreciated. And we look forward to sharing those, you know, the public benefits case on the major development that's planned in the, in, you know, in the immediate future. And can I just add to that? We're going to be taking um, 
I'm doing a lot of public engagement with residents as we build up to submitting the new application. We'd very much welcome the opportunity to do a briefing to yourself and more members through appropriate channels with, with officers um, and to ensure that we can engage with the right people from the public consultation perspective as well. So if that's appropriate, we'll take it up maybe with um, with, with James Bolton, agreed the most appropriate forum to engage with board members in, in that respect, if that's okay. That's helpful. Thank you. I echo, I echo Mads's comments that we're very grateful to officers recognising the importance of a permanent solution here. Um, and our kind of firm message back is that we agree very much and we, we look forward to seeing something more permanent. Are there any further questions? In which case, I'm going to suggest that we um, move to the vote. Um, is it possible to place the recommendation back on our screen in the chamber so that we can see it, please? Yes, I'll do that now. Thank you. Um, I was going to say, as ever, I shan't read it out, but actually it's very short, maybe I shall. <laughs> Strategic Development Committee is asked to resolve two, one, agree the reasons for approval as set out in this report, and two, grant planning commission based on the conditions listed in Appendix 1 of the committee report. May I please see all those members in favour? That is unanimous, thank you very much. And that resolves this item of the agenda. Thank, thank you, Chair, thank you, members. We'll thank you for coming, and we, we look forward to seeing more of you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, members, and appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. We move on to item number seven, um, which is Moniga Primary School. Um, my apologies, do you prefer to pronounce it Moniga or Moniga? It's Moniga Primary School. Moniga, thank you for correcting that. I will endeavour to get that right. Um, could I ask, therefore, that the applicants have five minutes in order to present the application to us? Yeah, um, I'm Gareth Fox, uh, Director at IRD Architects, who uh, we're acting as agent for the Berlin Trust. Um, I'll probably hand over, if that's OK, uh, Elizabeth, to you at the end, just to say a couple of words in, in support of the application. Uh, it's a full, full uh, planning application for uh, uh, an extension to the existing Victorian board school. Uh, I've got some material, I'll keep it, keep it sweet, um, just give an overview of the scheme. Um, ah, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Am I not able to share my screen? Apologies, Chair. Can you tell me who I need to give co-host rights to? Yourself? Uh, yes, so I'm Jimmy here. Uh, I also work at IID Architects and I'm the architect working. We'll just, we'll just set that up now. We're just changing the um, hosting of the meeting so that you're able to share your screen. Right. We'll just take a moment. I may allow you an extra minute to if you need it at the end. You should be able to share your screen now. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you. You. Sorry about that. Yeah, so this is Monica Primary School in East Ham. Um, as I said, it's um, run by the Berlin Trust, Multi Academy Trust. Uh, it's a triple decker Victorian board school, um, which means uh, it's a beautiful building, building of local interest, um, which is the reason why um, this has um, caused some interest in terms of the planning application. We had to go through a design review panel process. Uh, to refine the design to where it's, uh, where it's got to now. Um, there are several reasons for the development. It started off, um, the school needed a hall space that wasn't central to all of the teaching uh, accommodation. Uh, they can't do any noisy activities without disrupting classes. So you can see those central windows in a Victorian board school. You have a large hall that's each of the three floors uh, surrounded by classrooms. So we're proposing an extension in this front elevation you can see uh, where you currently have some toilets which are being relocated uh, to provide a new entrance, um, which uh, the, the school reception is currently around the corner, quite discreet. Um, uh, above that, there will be a new um, senior uh, management team suite of offices, uh, which will be more um, centrally located with the uh, reception. Um, and above that, there will be a, um, a studio, uh, which will have a stage and you can uh, do gym classes, PE, etc. in it, uh, separate from the main uh, halls. Um, the, uh, this main entrance you can see currently, uh, you, you, don't, you can't see that there's actually timber screening all along this entrance. Um, the idea behind this development is that where you currently have toilets that need to be screened for safeguarding, 
that screening can then be removed and create a much more welcoming environment for the front of the school. Um, we've um, uh, had to work with the existing levels. So each of those windows you can see, Victorian board schools have um, two and a half metre floor, floor to floor levels, uh, which we're working with to keep the height of the extension down, uh, but using um, a double height space as you'll be able to see in there. Um, these are the floor plans. Again, I'll, I'll just canter through this uh, to give you an overview because I'm sure Raj Vinder will be able to um, give her, her comment on uh, reason for approval. Um, you can see a ground floor, which is your reception and admin area. Uh, the first mezzanine floor where we're slotting in um, some offices uh, with a double height space at the front. Uh, then the next floor up is the drama studio. And then finally, there's a roof area containing all of the plants, which will be screened. Um, there was a discussion about a green roof, but there, is, there will be a lot of plant space up there. So I know that will be a question about sustainability. Um, there, there, there isn't any um, scope to be including a green roof and or, or a play deck up on the roof um, due to the equipment. Um, on this view, you can see um, that the front of the school and development, what we'll be creating is a kind of um, external airlock uh, where um, we've, we've been consulting Secure by Design about the, the, the railings and the planting uh, to add some green to the site. Um, but uh, it'll all be securely developed so that you can just walk in into the new reception space for seating, etc. Uh, this is the final elevation of the school. Um, we, we've chosen materially to go with a, a lighter brick uh, which has been used in other um, uh, developments around New uh, where the schools have expanded. It's the sensitive elevation. Um, we're in a residential area. It's not um, kind of on the high street or particularly conspicuous, but on that street, uh, what we have to do is try and um, make, make the extension as low as possible and to defer to the, the context and also um, relates to the existing buildings, um, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, there's also um, an idea of um, introducing some lattice screening, uh, which addresses um, the, the building south facing. So we're trying to minimise glazing, uh, but maximise lights. There'll be some um, additional screening and uh, solar shading. Uh, and the, the large amount of brickwork you can see on, on, on the building there is due to this drama space behind, where there will be a, um, a stage and it, it works better with the arrangement than having more glazing on the front. Uh, elevationally, you can see on the top left, this is the section through the building, so you can see there where we've uh, managed to cram in quite a lot of accommodation on quite a, um, a low floor to floor level. Um, and then on the right of that, you can see where the timber screening, where it currently continues along to the left, that will be removed due to the, um, the, the changing of the um, security railings. Uh, the, the, the timber screen will only be where the playground space is, and currently that playground space extends where the toilets are. And then that finally, the been, lobby. Sorry, that, that has been six minutes. Um, sorry. I'm inclined, okay. to be, I'm inclined to be a tiny bit indulgent. Um, okay. But if, if you could perhaps just concentrate on the, the, the important things for another minute or so, and then we'll bring in the officer report. Absolutely. Apologies. Um, the, the corbel brickwork to the new elevation um, echoes the caretaker house down the road, so we're trying to use some of the language. Um, this is just a uh, view of the new lift, which will serve uh, five levels. So basically each of the mezzanines and the three halls. Uh, currently, the school don't have that access. And we'll be creating an accessible wheelchair ramp from the uh, street into the new entrance also. Um, this is just some ideas of the screening, which will work with the school uh, to develop. And then the planting to the new main entrance. And uh, thank you, Chair. That's all I have to say. Uh, Liz, did you want to say a word? Um, I'm aware um, you don't have very much time. Um, yet for um, us as a team at the school, it's really just about bringing kind of inclusivity into the school, um, giving it um, a modern edge. And I think just providing some kind of 21st century capacity um, that will be, yeah, life changing for some people. So. Thank you. <clears throat> and I'd, I'd like to thank you for coming as well. We know the pressure's on head teachers' time and we're always very grateful to see heads at planning committee meetings in case we have questions to ask you. Um, if I could move on next to the officer report, please. Thank you, Chair. I shall share my screen now.
can I check that you can see the screen presentation? We can, thank you. Thank you. Good evening members, item seven, Monega Primary School. The site is situated in the northeast of the borough and is bounded by Monega Road to the south and Halley Road to the north. The application seeks the demolition of the existing single story toilet block infill and proposes the erection of a three story extension, providing a new reception for year, administrative spaces, parent room, accessible WC, conference room and extension for a new platform lift. There is no increase in pupil numbers as a result of this proposal. These images are the view from Monega Road and Halley Road. The proposal is to be cited on the southern elevation shown in the upper image, which is Monega Road. This image is a view northwest showing the recessed area where the platform lift is proposed. This image is an aerial of the site showing the main building and the infill extension on the southern elevation from an aerial point of view. And the nursery building can be seen in the southwestern corner of the site also. This image shows the southern elevation with the area of the proposed entrance block and platform lift outlined in yellow. The block plan shows the outline and extent of the footprint of the proposals on the southern elevation. And this image shows a visual of the proposal. Through pre-application, the proposals were refined with the fence line simplified, brick detailing added and windows enlarged and landscaped areas increased along the boundary to the front. Key planning considerations are the principle of development, design, heritage and impact upon amenity. The principle of the use of the site for education is established and the council would be supportive of facilities that provide improved educational facilities to meet the growing and diverse needs of the borough's young population. Officers recognise the immediate benefit that this proposal would provide in improvements to the school site and creating additional teaching and centralised administrative accommod accommodation, including better accessibility. The proposal is therefore supported. In terms of design, the scale of the proposed building, in terms of the, less, the massing, the layout and height is considered to be appropriate to the existing school. The new extension and the platform lift are considered acceptable for the intended use. The design includes recommendations from the Metropolitan Police designing out crime officers. Overall, it is considered that the building extension and external area are well detailed and are of a high quality, and that the materials and the design also take account the needs of the school and the access. The design is therefore supported. In terms of heritage, the impact of the locally listed building has been assessed in line with national and local policy within the officer report. Officers consider that the proposal due to its siting, its scale and its design would not have a negative impact on the locally listed building. The proposal provides improvements to the school by creating the additional accommodation and a better entrance layout and creating better accessibility. Officers are supportive of the proposals subject to conditions relating to materials and detailing. In terms of impact to neighbouring immunity, in response to the consultation, no representations have been received from the public. Notwithstanding, officers have carefully considered the proposals and subject to conditions is anticipated not to have an unacceptable impact upon neighbouring residential amenity. Members are asked to resolve to agree the reasons for approval as set out in this report and to grant planning permission based on the conditions listed in Appendix 1 of the committee report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I'll just give you a moment. I was going to say to stop sharing your screen and thank you. I can see you've done that. And um, we'll move on to questions. Um, Councillor Morris and then Councillor Garfield. Um, so I know it's in paragraph 112 on page 94. <coughs> the applicant didn't submit details in relation to uh, cycle parking for services. Um, and I also know that one of the conditions, uh, number seven, is that um, one of the conditions of approval is that the applicant will provide details on cycle parking. Um, I was wondering, uh, to be honest, um, has the applicant provided details and what are those details for cycle parking infrastructure? Uh, so the, the condition has been recommended so that those details can be provided um, following the, the issuing of a decision notice if members are minded to approve the application. So at this stage, we don't have them in the beginning stage of the development. So this is to bring the site up in line with London Plan standards. And what would London Plan standards require for this site? Uh, uh, I, off the top of my head, I don't know what the number of cycle parking spaces, but we've kept it with London Plan standards in case there are any alterations in, by the time their condition comes to being discharged. Um, can, you, can you hazard a guess on what those proposals would look like? Or oh, oh, can I ask the applicant, Chair? Uh, um, so uh, another question to the applicant is, uh, what cycle uh, provision are you probably going to offer and where would you place it? 
the, just speaking for, for the for the trust, this this is um, we haven't shown any cycle parking up to this point. This is this is something new that's come out of the, the proposed condition. But um, there, there is ample space on the school site to be able to locate some parking spaces, but we would deal with that as a condition. But you don't have any at the moment. Sorry, Liz. Yes, yes, we do. We have three stations at the moment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Joshua. This is better than Morris asked my question, but I have a <laughs> second. Um, I wondered, uh, looking at the, the window details on, on condition nine, you made me think of the experience of schools all over the borough during the heat waves in the summer. And I wondered, given that this is a new construction, uh, what is the expectation on the building design in terms of both HVAC insulation and trying to prevent solar gain so that it's both warm in the winter and efficiently warm in the winter, given the past was yours at the moment, probably forever now, and making sure that it's cool in the summer. Because we know that the advice that we gave as an education department for schools was please, please stay open because however bad things are, things are worse by the times. So I wanted to hear a little bit of information if possible on the measures that have been implemented to ensure that it is going to be a building that can withstand the heat waves that we are to be expecting. Uh, if I can just answer that, um, the building has been thermally modelled. There was an energy report submitted with the application. Uh, the, 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 there's a two-part um, strategy for, for, heat, for ventilating the building. The studio will be naturally ventilated with um, wind turrets on the roof. Uh, but that you'll be tempering the air coming in in the winter um, through grills on the frontage. Um, so, and then the, the, all the office spaces and also the, the halls, which currently get very hot. They'll instead be, um, because we're sealing off one end of the building and all those halls, we're introducing uh, uh, mechanic, mech vent heat recovery. So uh, that sustainability wise, we have to comply with the London plan 35% improvement on uh, Partel 2013. So it's all been taken into account that this is going to be a very energy efficient building. We're effectively insulating one face of the existing board school building with a new building, uh, which will retain more of the heat and uh, lower energy costs. Um, and, and, and the heating, um, we're using existing gas fired boilers um, with, with a radiator strategy. But it's a, there, there's a balance that's been done in terms of the thermal model uh, to make sure that we get, we're getting very energy efficient building. Uh, do you have any figures on what you expect the minimum and the maximum temperature of, of the new building to be in either climate? I don't, I don't have those to hand, but that will be all part, that will be in the energy report. Excellent. Thank you. Any further questions, please? Matt. Um, hello. Um, I know that you're going to be knocking down the old toilet block to uh, build uh, this, what looks like a very, uh, what is presenting as a really nice and neat um, package for the school. How many toilets are you demolishing? There are 14 toilets and they're getting redistributed in um, where the school actually need them higher up in the building. Uh, you've got classrooms at each of the three levels and children have to go quite a long way. So we thought in an overview, uh, review of the school, move those toilets from there. You've got them on the other end of the school for the playground. Um, so it's all been accounted for. Okay, that's good to know because they've only been replaced by seven toilets for boys. So yeah. thank you for um, letting me know that. Uh, just wanted to check the two side doors, which open from the front lobby into the school, um, both open into small lobby areas at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, is there sufficient space there? And how many children do you expect to be coming in and out of those spaces? We have been through the designs with an approved inspector who's been involved all the way to this point. Um, in terms of means of escape, we factored it in during construction as well. But um, the numbers um, from the top of the building down to the bottom, you know, you've got 30 pupils per class uh, times 14 classes. Um, they're, they're, all, they're, they're all accommodated in those um, lobbies at the bottoms of the staircases. I'm not quite sure if that answered the question. I'm, when's um, maybe perhaps the head teacher can answer, Chair, if that's possible. 
Will the children be entering and exiting the school on a daily basis through these spaces, or does that happen through the um, playground? Uh, so it happens through <clears throat> a number of different entrances. So there's entrances on both ends of the um, building. So we have currently four um, entrance and ex exits for children to come in um, in the morning and leave at the end of the day. We will be losing one of those um, as part of this project. But as Gareth said, when we um, went through the process and looked at um, different ways to exit, it's possible to do it safely using the ones that will be remaining. OK, I'm just very conscious that to get from the um, ground floor hall through to the lobby, it's going to take three doors on either side um, and some of them are quite close together. So the thought of getting, um, you know, 30 children, if you need to, through those doors, it's going to be quite a task. But if it's all been accounted for, that's great. Uh, I think the last thing I wanted to just check, is there a particular reason why the the the, um, the lift is over and stuck in the corner rather than central to the design? Uh, so we've been through the design review panel process. There were several iterations where the lift was within the footprint of the extension. And it really was, you know, it's a game of chess. Everywhere you moved it, it would mess something else up. Uh, we went through several um, options where we had that lift in that area. We also looked elsewhere in the school, and that was definitely the optimum place without the school losing amenity in other areas. My concern, again, is about the fact that you've got three doors from the lobby to the lift. Um, and I think it's the same on the upper floor. So somebody with a wheelchair or with a pram going up to see the head or the Senko is going to have to negotiate quite a number of doors plus the lift to get up. So whilst it may be inclusive, it's not particularly accessible. I think the, uh, a wheelchair can, it's, it's all very constrained. This is the problem. The, um, those stairwells, there's no other way of achieving that wheelchair access with the other factors we were dealing with. Okay, can there be a, some attention please to the particular style of the door at those points so that people can actually manage to move through the building without uh, independently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can look at that. Yeah, could that be noted please? Perhaps we could ask officers to take that away and look at that with the applicants. Um, my, sorry, my last point was that I was a little concerned that from the um, from the mezzanine level, there's actually no direct access into the school. I think there is, isn't there? It's, is, there a particular, is there a particular page you're looking at? Sorry, page 112. I'm looking at the at the um, SLT suite on the mezzanine. Mm -hmm. You've got no direct. Um, I know you don't necessarily have a link directly into the school from that level, because of the height of um, school boards buildings. But it concerns me. But there's no window back into the hall, or there's no direct um, visual communication or space for you to walk directly into the school. You'll have to walk out of your suite onto the balcony, then onto one of the staircases and then up or down to another level to gain access into the main body of the school. That just seems a bit unusual for an SLT suite in a school. I think we, we have lots of um, SLT kind of spaces at the moment, lots of small little offices dotted all around in kind of little cubby holes. I, this feels more open to me in the sense that it's kind of front facing, it's where the community come into the school. At the moment, I'm a long way away from where the community come into the school. Um, and I think, well, I guess on paper, it looks like I'm not very connected perhaps there, um, but it's a really short walk down a short flight of stairs and you're in the main throng, the main hall. Um, and to be honest, I'm, we're so mobile, we're up and down everywhere. So it doesn't feel disconnected to me, but perhaps I, I appreciate that um, it might seem like that on paper. Yeah, I think it does. And I okay. think if there's any way in which there can be any kind of um, link 
at all, <laughs> whether that's glazing or something else, because it's going to be... Pardon? No, it's not glazed onto the main school. You gla you've got a glazing onto the front balcony, which overlooks the lobby, which is not used by the actual school community. It's used by, sorry, the school body. It's used by the community coming in. So it'll be, I take it, I'm presuming, parents coming in with children who are late, students being picked up from after school kids club. Um, you'll have visitors coming into the building that will really appreciate that openness. But what you haven't got is SLT actually having any overview of the school or the playground. Yeah, we would we wouldn't be able to see the playground from the position we're in. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that perhaps we could have something that looks back into the hall. But I think the height of it might be a problem because it's got a floating ceiling in the hall. Um, it's not the same height. So I think if we did have a visual um, a window, you'd be looking into the space between the roof and the floating roof. But I might be wrong. I'm not a designer. Um, <laughs> But we can we can definitely look at look at it. I think the levels would actually allow that to happen, Liz. I think I think we could definitely look at creating a screen in your office into the hall. Okay, perfect. There you go. Solution. Fantastic. I think I think in the long run you will find that useful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did have a question. I note the um, condition about community access. Um, and I think it's really important to us as a committee that where public money is spent, as it should be, on improving educational facilities, that those facilities are available for the wider community as well. Um, I wondered how much community access there is to the school facilities at the moment and what kind of groups use it out of hours? Um, we don't have any groups that use it out of hours at the moment. No, we don't. One of our challenges is we don't have an on-site caretaker. Um, so we have, um, yeah, we don't have that facility. Um, we have, we do, sorry, we have hired it, well, not hired, we've given it free we um, to some community groups of football in, in the summer holidays, but we don't have regular use um, other, other times. Based on that, do you have any thoughts about how you'll be able to meet the condition about community access? I mean, we, we have community access throughout our working week. So we have SL classes here. We have parent toddler groups here. So we do have lots of community participation, but we don't hire our facilities. If that's what you're asking me, we don't charge anyone to use it. Um, OK, but perhaps that's a, a conversation that I could have elsewhere with officers about yeah. exact terms of that condition, because that's a pretty standard condition that we impose all the time. Um, yeah. Um, I was going to say that the, the kind of things you've listed are very commendable and fantastic, but as we know, they are a normal part of um, many schools' day, and they're not actually community use. Mm -hmm. They're community engagement by the school on behalf of the school community, rather than offering a location to the wider community. So, for example, if you needed somebody to, if people wanted to come in and do yoga or mums and tums or mm -hmm. football or something uh, on the evening or the weekend, and considering that it that is something that you've actually put in your proposal, it seems a trifle strange that there has been no consideration of how you're going to meet that need and how we are going to ensure that the need is met. Yeah, that's a fair comment. I think what we might need to do is to um, ask officers to go away and do some thinking about um, how that condition um, can be meaningfully met. Um, were there any further questions from the committee? John? Yes, I know that um, the police did provide some recommendations to the uh, Secure by Design um, recommendations. Um, and some of those uh, recommendations was accepted by the applicant. So I just wanted to know, can the applicant provide me some details of what recommendations were provided and which ones they accepted? Yeah, I briefly touched on the um, external airlock concept that was key to our discussions with uh, Claire Halifax from the Met Police. Um, we also reviewed the, um, the, the railings and particularly access controls into the school make sure no one was getting tailgated when they come through the um, through the main school gates because obviously it is all very open and there, there needs to be a way of, if, if you do have an intruder 
then um, th th there'll be several stages at which that intruder can be identified and, and kept away. Um, and then also being able to um, get, get over the fences, that they're all at the correct height. That means that e even um, with, with the planting boxes, that's a, um, the, the, the planting uh, that's proposed along that elevation, you won't be able to get a foothold and get over the gates uh, to access the school. Thank you. Thank you. Any final questions from committee members, please? Um, in which case, I suggest that we move to a vote. Um, can I once again ask that the recommendation is put up on our screen here in the council chamber? Uh, the committee is asked to agree the reasons for approval as set out in the report and to grant planning permission based on the conditions listed in Appendix 1. May I please see all those in favour? Thank you very much. That is once again um, <clears throat> unanimous. Sorry, the word unanimous escaped me for a moment there. That is once again unanimous, which means that we all voted for it. Thank you very much. Um, wishing you every success with the development work and hope that the um, upheaval is limited. Uh, and we'll be looking forward to um, seeing it when it's all in place. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you very um, much. Thank you. Thank you. That moves us on to item eight, which is the development land at John Street in Stratford. Um, <clears throat> could I please have a pre presentation from the applicants? And as with the others, we will give you five minutes. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, could I just mention that I think other members of the team are still in the waiting area, waiting to join the meeting? So I don't know if somebody could let them in. That we don't have anyone in the waiting room. Oh, Andrew's come in now. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so good evening. I'm Francis Young from DLP Planning, the agent for the application. I'm speaking on behalf of the London and Borough of Newham's Affordable Homes Delivery Team. We're seeking a minor material amendment to the planning permission, which was granted back in March 2022 in relation to the approved scheme of 70 new affordable homes on land at John Street. The approved scheme comprises of part four, part 12 story block of flats fronting Church Street with a row of three-storey townhouses and a four-storey corner block fronting John Street to provide 70 residential units with a mix of one, two and three bed units, including seven wheelchair units, um, all at London affordable rent. And in addition, there's a central communal area with place space provided within a landscape space and, and a landscape space in the southeast corner of the site. The scheme will be car free except for three blue bench parking spaces on site. So the current section 73 application seeks planning permission to vary condition two in relation to approved drawings and documents in order to allow for an amended scheme following design development and the appointment of Higgins partnership as the contractor for the scheme. Overall, the proposed changes will help to make the building more efficient and improve the internal layout of specific units whilst retaining the overall design principles of the scheme. The proposed blocks are arranged within the site as per the approved scheme layout and only minor changes are proposed to the landscape and boundary treatment, including a slight widening of the central space. Changes have been made to the internal structure of the building in order to maximize unit stacking and to ensure that the principal load bearing walls line through. The detailed layouts of some of the units have been improved and these internal changes are reflected in minor changes to the envelope of the building including modifications to windows and balcony positions and sizes, and also the addition of some projecting balconies on block C. However, these external changes are generally in accordance with the approved design approach. So overall, there's no change to the general scale, height and massing of the scheme, and no changes to the building envelope, and there will be no greater impact on neighboring properties. No changes have been made to the number of units, the tenure or size mix, which will remain as approved. In addition, the scheme will continue to be car free, except for the three blue badge spaces. The scheme has been designed to passive house low energy standards and all homes meet London plan, internal space and private amenity standards. However, as part of the section 73 application, we have made some changes to the energy strategy. Um, the scheme uses a communal heat network with central air, air source heat pumps, but under the Section 73 scheme, the heat the system has been changed from an ambient loop system to separate centralised systems for space heating and domestic hot water. But this has actually resulted in an improvement um, over the original scheme, which is now 
percent better than the building regulations part L compared to 68 percent in the approved scheme. So the principle of development was established with the original planning permission and the proposals just seek to improve the um, arrangements internally and to improve the energy strategy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Were there any other speakers from the applicants who wished to address us in the remaining minute? I'll take that as a no. I think the others were just to um, answer any questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you. In which case, we'll move on to the officer presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. Okay, can I check you can see my screen? We can, thank you. Okay, so this application is development land at John Street. So the application site is in the northwest of the borough on the northern side of John Street. It's bound to the north by Cridland Street, to the west by Church Street, and to the east by Playstow Grove. So permission was previously granted for 70 units of affordable housing. This application is a section 73 application to vary the approved plans to make some changes to the design and associated um, changes to the internal layouts. Uh, here are some key views of the CGI's of the, of the proposal. Uh, this is from Church View, uh, Church Street, sorry, and from Blaisdell Grove. So the key planning considerations are the principle of development, the design, impact on the amenity, and the energy and sustainability. In terms of the principle of development, uh, this has already been set by the parent permission. So the housing numbers, the mix, the tenure all remain exactly the same. Uh, the loss of the boxing club was established in that permission as well, and the re requirement for replacement facility is within the legal agreement, which also applies to this application. Uh, likewise, the loss of open space was justified in the parent permission, and in this case remains acceptable, so therefore the principle of development is still acceptable. In terms of design, the overall building, um, again, established by the extent permission, the proposed changes involve alterations to fenestration and balcony positions and officers consider that these changes do not undermine the quality of the approved development and these design changes are supported. In terms of impact on amenity, um, the building envelope is not being extended so there's no greater impact on daylight, sunlight or outlook compared to the extent scheme. There will be some changes to the views as a result of the repositioning of windows, however, these will not result in any material um, impacts in terms of overlooking or loss of privacy. So again, these are supported. And lastly, there is a change to the energy strategy. Uh, this results in a increase in the carbon reduction from 68% to 75%. So this is a betterment over the approved scheme and is likewise supported. So members are requested to agree the reasons for approval set out in the report and delegate the authority to the Director of Planning and Development to grant permission subject to the completion of a legal agreement under Section 106 of the Town and Country Planning Act based on the heads of term in Appendix 2 and the conditions listed in Appendix 1 of the committee report. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just give you a moment to stop sharing your screen. And there we go. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask members, please, whether they have any um, questions they would like to address either to applicants or officers? I've only got one. Go ahead. Um, I was just wondering, it, it's noted that the boxing club has been relocated. Where's it been relocated to? It hasn't been relocated as yet, but there are plans to relocate it. Um, we've been in discussions with um, Sport England um, regarding that. So it's still on site at the moment, but once um, work starts on site, it will be relocated. And that's within the local area? It will be, yes. Good, because it's a prime local asset. Thank you. Um, my only comment was that I really wanted to welcome the increased energy efficiency. I think any time that we can get any kind of increased energy efficiency, particularly out of our own developments, is really, really welcome. Um, if there are no further questions or comments, um, then I'm going to suggest for the last time this evening that we move to the vote. Um, could we please have the recommendation up on screen again? I won't read this one. The committee's asked to approve as per what's written up there. Can I please ask members to see those who are in favour of this? Thank you very much. Again, that is unanimous, meaning that we all voted the same way and the, um, the application is approved. Thank you.
The last item on our agenda is item nine, which is the date of the next meeting, and which I have as the 11th of October. Um, I'd like to thank very much members and Shirley who attended in person and those who joined us online for, I think, possibly one of our shortest planning, planning meetings on record. So uh, enjoy the rest of your evenings. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. <laughs>